Uh, good evening, members. Good evening, officers. Uh, welcome to the Planning Applications Committee, Thursday the 1st of September. Apparently, the summer is over. Uh, welcome to anybody that has joined us on YouTube. Um, firstly, can we have fire instructions, please? Um, we aren't expecting fire drill tonight, so if you do hear a loud, continuous ring, that is the fire alarm. Um, if it does ring, please leave the building promptly and calmly using the stairs next to the lift, if possible. Um, the fire escape, oh, so that my left, my right, sorry, should only be used as a last resort. Do not stop to collect personal belongings and please do not use the lift. Um, once you're outside the building, please um, muster in the, in the outside part of the Knoll Road multi-storey car park at, by the assembly point. Uh, please do not leave the assembly point until you are told it's safe to do so. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, members, can I sign the minutes of the last meeting? Thank you. Uh, thank you, members, for not picking me up on the not-so-deliberate error. Uh, apologies for absence, please. Um, I've not actually received any apologies um, as yet. Thank you very much. Um, declarations we will deal with on each item, which takes us through to the first item on my agenda, uh, which is page 11, uh, 8 Orchard Close, West End. Uh, are there any declarations on this item? Yes, Councillor. Thank you, Mr Chairman. Um, I attended the West End Parish Council meeting at which this application was discussed, but I come to this meeting with an open mind. Thank you very much. Any other declarations? Councillor Alloway. Thank you, Chairman. Yeah, just to mention that I visited the rear garden of, rear garden of number six at the request of the resident. I will come back to you on that uh, aspect, Councillor Alloway. Um, if there are no other declarations, uh, pass on to uh, Mr. Rahman. Um, firstly, this is Mr. Rahman's first attendance at this committee meeting. So, members, just play nicely, please. Mr. Rahman, over to you. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Uh, the application before us relates to eight orchard close in Woking for the construction of a first floor side extension to the south side and a part two storey part first floor extension to the north side of the dwelling. The application has been called in by Councillor Alloway due to the neighbouring amenity impact concerns and insufficient parking issues. There have been two previous applications on this site for similar... So can you just... Sorry, stop can a we... Second. Can yes, can Councillor we just... Wheeler. Yeah, I'm getting feedback too. I was just seeing, has anybody got their mic on? OK, let's have another go and see how we get on. Thank you, Chair. Uh, the application before us relates to eight orchard clothes. Yeah. Sorry, we're still... Any other ideas? The application before us relates to eight orchard close in Woking for the construction of a first floor side extension to the south side and a part two storey part first floor extension to the north side of the dwelling. The application has been called in by Councillor Alloway due to neighbouring amenity impact concerns and insufficient parking issues. There have been two previous applications on this site for similar additions. The last application was refused on amenity grounds to number six orchard close. However, no objections were raised to the character impact. 
The site has a side garage which sits directly adjacent to number, the end of number six's rear garden, as you can see from the regular plot shape. Picture to the left shows the front elevation of number eight with the rear elevation of number six seen in the background. Picture on the right shows the application site with number 10. These pictures on the left show the application site in view from, the, from number six's rear garden, whilst the second photo shows number six's garage in the foreground and number eight's garage directly adjacent to this in the background. This is an image showing the rear elevation of number six where it faces directly towards the application site. These are the existing floor plans showing how the garage sits in relation to number six's rear garden, as you can see there. These are the proposed floor plans. The side extension has been reduced in its overall width so that, the, so that rather than sitting adjacent to the neighboring rear garden, it now sits beyond it. These are the proposed elevations showing that the proposal does not now extend above the existing garage. This slide shows a comparison between the current and previous application to show the extent of the reduction with the red line signifying the outline of the neighboring rear garden. Given the significant reduction in the size and scale of the side extension, it is considered that the previous reason for refusal has been sufficiently addressed and there would be no significant amenity harm arising from the development over and above the existing context to warrant a reason for refusal. With respect to the parking concerns raised, this was not a reason for refusal on the previous application property retains the same number of bedroom spaces as existing. County guidance advises the need for two vehicle parking spaces, which the development provides to the hard standing area to the front garden. On this basis, it is, it is officers, rec officers recommend a grant of approval subject to conditions. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Um, Councillor Alleyway, uh, as stated, you called this one in. Would you be kind enough to the reasons for doing so, please? Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Yeah. The residents of number six Orchard Close have raised concerns again about the impact of the proposal on their rear garden residential amenity. The proposal for a two-storey extension would present a significant brick and tile face here directly in front of some of their rear garden, which would impinge on some light and present a overbearing visual encroachment. The rear garden of number six has a limited open vista currently above the single level extensions of number eight, and the addition of a second story would reduce the openness currently enjoyed. Due to the relationship of number six and number eight, the proposed extension would have no windows to protect privacy, and in itself would present an unsympathetic view of brick and tile from the rear garden of number six. The boundary line of the garden of number six can be seen as the two lines shown on the ground floor plan drawing. And the picture of the modest rear garden as shown on page 28 of your papers to give an idea of the impact of a second story. <clears throat> Parking is always a concern with the potential of five vehicles either by current or, or future occupants of number eight but could be mitigated with the condition that the garage must be used for vehicle storage to alleviate street parking. In summary, I would ask members to carefully consider the proposal should be refused on the grounds of impact on rear garden amenity, overbearing and unsympathetic view of brick and tile from the rear garden, impingement of light and openness on the rear garden of number six. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Um, <clears throat> members, I'll throw that before I come back to the officers. Councillor Wheeler. Thank you. It's just a question as to where geographically the extension will sit. So is it north of the garden, south, east or west of the garden of number eight, please? Mr Roman. So, I'm sorry, I haven't got the select location plan up. Um, it would sit south of the site, south of the rear garden. Okay, so just to come back, if I can, if I can be clear, so the fact that there is a, a quite a, a difference in height of the extension means that it would impact on the neighbour's garden. 
um, the extension has actually been pulled away so that it doesn't sit adjacent to the flank of the rear garden nor beyond it. Um, it's, so where the line of the rear garden is, it sits away from this, um, and that's the reduction that we saw as part of the amended drawings. And you would have seen on the last slide, making the comparison. Thanks. So for clarity, the extension will not have any light impact. It will not cast a shadow on the neighbour's garden, I suppose, is the absolute clarity that I'm looking for. We don't believe there'd be any significant impact over and above the existing impact of the dwelling. Um, any other comment, councillors? There was a suggestion by Councillor Alloway regarding the future use of the garage. I think with the existing situation of the garage, from, from what I can see on, when I went on site, was that it was used for storage current purposes. I'm not sure how strong a condition would be to, to limit that full parking. I don't know if you want to jump in. Thank you, Chair. Um, so in terms of the actual um, garage itself, I mean, obviously it's used for storage at the moment. Uh, the officer has actually said within its presentation uh, that uh, there are four rooms currently in the house itself um, and it wouldn't increase the occupancy of uh, the dwelling. Um, it is noted that the rooms are larger, uh, but in terms of the dwelling size and also the guidance by Surrey County Council, uh, there is sufficient parking as part of this site itself. Yeah, thank you. That, um, but it was more the um, ongoing use, as I understand it, from Councillor Alloway of the garage, which could potentially be converted into further living accommodation and have it conditioned that it would not be used for living accommodation but remain as a garage. I suppose what needs to be considered is the overall harm that would cause in the area, um, given that there is obviously an existing um, um, a car parking spaces on the driveway, which caters for that. I think it wouldn't be right to actually condition a historic matter, which is currently there at the moment. Thank you. Councillor Wheeler. I apologise for uh, disagreeing with the officers. Um, but actually, I feel that to condition it to be maintained in its current use would de give a degree of protection. Um, I think we have to consider we've got a family or whoever it is living in there at the moment. Um, it could just as easily become a house of multiple occupation with the number of rooms that are there and the number of bathrooms there. So by protecting residential amenity, by ensuring that the current use of the garage is maintained, I have to say, would make me feel a little bit happy. I appreciate that if it's currently used for storage, we can't insist that it's kept clear for parking a car in it, but we can prevent it um, from becoming additional hab um, habitable accommodation. Um, and I think that would seem to be a fair and, and practical condition um, to apply in this case. Um, I am inclined to agree with the Vice Chairman. We have conditioned on other instances to have the garage not as habitable accommodation. I would think possibly this was a sensible condition, personally, uh, to add in this instance. I think just come back to the point of the HMO, um, in terms of the actual application for that, that we need a planning permission for that use. I, and I and understand, Councillor Wheeler, from your perspective, there could be a concentration of use. But given, come back to the issue about the parking, the sufficient parking on the site at the moment, um, I would be hesitant to actually grant an application with, with that condition imposed. But if, if, if members feel that that is the best option for this scheme, but given that there is sufficient parking on the site, then members will have, will have to decide to impose that condition. I'm only giving my advice on, on this, um, that there is sufficient parking on the site itself. Members, um, you've heard two sides of the argument. Are there any comments from the members in respect of this? Councillor Betton. Uh, thank you, Chair. I've um, been looking at the photograph on page 28 
and the large expanse of sky, which is to the south. So the sun is coming in that way. And then you look at the proposed rear elevation of, and, and the side elevation on page 23 and impose that onto the photograph. And I'm inclined to agree with Councillor Alloway. It does look overbearing and filling the sky and it's going to be cutting out sun into the back garden in my opinion. Thank you, Councillor Betton. Um, are there strong views either way in respect of a condition on the, hearing what, our advice from the Head of Planning on the um, garage not to be used for habitable accommodation without coming back to this committee? Yeah. Councillor Alloway? Yeah, I, I would agree the condition needs to be on there. We have done in previous <clears throat> applications. Councillor Wheeler, you're indicating, or just, just waving at me? Just waving at you, Chair, um, but no, indicate, <laughs> indicating that I would be supportive of that condition. Is that the view of this committee? One, two, three, four, five, six, yes. I'll take it as a majority view then. Um, I think the amended recommendation, and here you say, Councillor Alloway. Yes, um, are we going to have a, a vote on whether to refuse it on the impact of amenity? Yeah. Yeah, okay, just yeah. to make sure that wasn't young people. I was just back. wanting to get that point clarified. There is a re officer recommendation which we have amended to require that the garage remains as a garage and not converted into habitable accommodation without prior approval. Um, obviously, there are some, in, some counter views against the officer recommendation, but the officer recommendation stands with that addition. Is there a proposal and a seconder for that recommendation? Councillor Tapper and Councillor Perry, all those in agreement with that recommendation. All those in favour, that's Councillor Barnett, Councillor Black, Councillor Gordon, Councillor Lewis, Councillor Noble, Councillor Perry, Councillor Rasram, Councillor Tapper, Councillor Whitcroft and Councillor White. <coughs> and Councillor Hawkins, sorry, <laughs> can't see you there. Against? Um, against Councillor Alloway, Councillor Betton, Councillor... Wheeler. Councillor Barnett, was your hand up a minute ago? No. no. Against, sorry. Yeah, and Councillor Barnett. Okay. So, members, the recommendation as amended has been carried. It, 11 votes to four. Thank you, members. Thank you, Mr. Roman. Um, on to um, the next item on page 31, 15 Mildon Close. Um, will not be presented tonight um, and is deferred to the um, October committee as further information has been um, reviewed and requires additional consultation. Um, there's a recommendation from me and seconded by Councillor Wheeler. Uh, members, are we in agreement with that recommendation? Thank you, members. That is unanimous. Uh, next item is um, on page 45, 45 Windsor Road, Chobham. Um, declarations on this item. Councillor Wheeler. Uh, thank you, Chair. I've had um, extensive uh, communications from neighbours on this matter, uh, but obviously come to the meeting with an open mind. Thank you. Any other declarations to make? No, and um, Ms. Kimber, thank you. Sorry. Uh, this application has been decided by the planning committee at the request of Councillor Tedder. There are two updates. Since writing the committee report, a further two representations have been received from two addresses and are included in the update sheet. 
The second update is that the applicants have agreed to a change of material for the Juliet balconies from railings to an obscure glazed glass screen. A recommended condition securing this is also included in the update sheet. So the application is for the erection of a single storey front side extension and a single storey rear extension. The application has been amended from the original submission, the widening of the vehicle access and the use of the roof over the single storey rear extension as a terrace have both been removed from the proposed development. So the plan currently on screen shows the application site outlined in black and the relationship with 47 Windsor Road to the neighbouring property to the north and 41 and 43 to the southeast. This building to the southeast is a commercial, has a commercial use at ground floor level with two residential units above. So the image on the left shows the front elevation of the application site and the side elevation of number 43. And the image on the right shows the rear elevation of 41 and 43 Windsor Road. At ground floor level, that window serves an office associated with the commercial use and the window at first floor level is a bedroom. The proposed development would not result in an adverse impact on the residential amenities of the occupiers of this neighbouring building. Come on. So the image on the left here shows the rear elevation of the application site and the image on the right shows the rear elevation of number 47 Windsor Road. The boundary fence between these two dwellings is two metres high the proposed extension would be single storey and would not have an adverse impact on the residential amenities of the occupiers of this property. So the proposed single storey front and rear extension and the single storey, sorry, single storey front and side extension and the single storey rear extension are shown highlighted in red on this plan. So these are the proposed floor plans with the ground floor at the bottom and the first floor at the top. The French windows are to open inwards as there is a barrier in the way prohibiting any access onto the flat roof. The Juliet balconies would not provide any additional floor area. A condition has been recommended to prevent the use of the flat roof as a balcony, roof garden or similar amenity area in the future. So these plans show the proposed elevations of the dwelling. The red dashed line shown on the top left plan shows the depth of the proposed rear extension. And the elevation on the top right shows the existing rear elevation. The development includes replacing the existing windows. This does not require planning permission. And the existing pattern of overlooking would not be significantly altered by the development. So the application is recommended for conditional approval. Thank you. Thank you very much. <coughs> Pardon me. Councillor Ted, are you there? Hmm? Right. So is, is Councillor Ted there? Come in, Councillor Ted. Speak to us. Is there anybody there? Yeah, I, yeah. Councillor Teddy did say she had a prior engagement and she would like to uh, speak, but uh, clearly uh, to explain to the committee why she had called this in, but clearly that's not possible. Um, so, uh, members, I will open it up to comment. Yes, Councillor Wheeler. Thank you, Chair. Obviously, as a joint ward councillor, um, I've had some communication. As I said right at the beginning, I've had communication um, with neighbours as well. I have to say that um, had it been me that had called in the application with the most recent update, I would have withdrawn the call in on the basis that I think that with the glazed glass and the removal of the use um, as an external patio area, we have actually done as much as we can to protect the residential amenities of the neighbours. Um, so I will be supporting the recommendation as amended with additional conditions um, this evening. Thank you. Thank you for that clarification. Uh, members, any other comments? If not, we have a recommendation as amended. 
uh, to grant uh, proposal and seconder, please. Uh, should we go to um, Councillor Betton and Councillor T Tapper? All those in agreement? That is unanimous. Thank you, members. Uh, on to our next item on um, page 59, uh, Gordon Murray, <coughs> HQ Windlesham. Um, and again, this item is not uh, going to be presented tonight as um, further information is required and the matter will be brought to um, hopefully the October meeting intention. Um, I recommend, I support the recommendation that it is deferred and I have seconder in Councillor Wheeler. Is everybody in agreement with that? Thank you, members. Um, and then rapidly Chair, moving on. This is where the wheels come off. Uh, on... Oh, sorry, Councillor Tapper. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, uh, you will remember that this um, particular item was the subject of a site visit. Um, that was eventually um, um, uh, deferred to a different date, uh, which uh, I most certainly couldn't attend at that time. Um, can we have assurances that uh, if a further site visit is planned, um, that we give, be uh, given um, sufficient notice um, and that uh, Gordon Murray uh, be requested not to withdraw it at the last moment or, or defer it? Uh, because uh, there may then end up in being conflicts with other events uh, which we would uh, have to attend and therefore have to turn down the, uh, the site visit, which might impact our view upon the application. Thank you, Chair. Um, yeah, Councillor Tapper, we will put our diaries uh, in order as much as we are able. Unfortunately, we do not have control over um, the uh, applicant or the applicant's staff um, but we will do, I know the officers will do their best to ensure that there is adequate notice for the site inspection. I couldn't make it and I particularly wanted to, but we will do our best. But um, I'm sorry, I'm not going to give you any promises, but we will do our utmost. Is that all right for you? Uh, that will suffice. Thank you. Great. Thank you very much. Um, on to item, the next item on page 95, um, the Princess Royal Barracks Deep Cut. Um, Declarations on this item? No. Mrs. Bishop. Thank you, Chairman. How do I switch it to the. Uh, this is back to Deep Cut, um, the application that we are looking at this evening. My one? If I go back. Sit back. The application that we are looking at this evening relates. Closer. Closer. Move it closer. 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 Oh, sorry. Right. Let's. Is that better? Yes? Better? Right. Okay. Sorry about that. Right, this relates to uh, Princess Royal Barracks uh, in Deepcut. This is the next phase of SANG allocation or provision for the development. As members will recall, the overall permission is for 1,200 dwellings. Because of the site's proximity to the Thames based T Special Protection Area, we need a lot of um, mitigation land. The first phase has been provided within uh, phase one up the top here. So this is the central sang, which is pretty much complete. There's a couple of bits that aren't done, but it is pretty much there. The area that we are looking at this evening is the southern sang and the southern sang link. So it is this area here, which is phase 5A. We have got this, which is currently shown as 5C, but we do have a phasing plan that includes that within phase 5A. This is going to be phase um, 5B which is the vehicle depot. And then to the north of Brunswick Road, we have got the remainder of the, the Southern Sang and the Sang Link, which links up to the Central Sang up here. Now the site has three distinct character areas. Now, this is the overall site. You can see that 
To the south here, we have the Basingstoke Canal. Uh, let's see. There you have the concrete road that leads from Deep Cupboard Road that goes all the way along here down to Frimley Lock, which is within Guildford. Then you have an area of land to the north of the concrete track, but to the south of Brunswick Road, which is here. And then we have the land to the north of the Bruns Brunswick Road, which is basically woodland. You can just see the officer's mess there. Part of, and it's part of the sports field up here. And there's the link up there into the central sang. So at the moment, this land is pretty much woodland, and that is what it's going to stay as. Uh, this is the vehicle depot. Um, everything to the north of the concrete track is going to be replanted. The depot is going to be removed um, and replaced with a landscaped uh, area. The area to the north of Brunswick Road is going to be retained as woodland. Uh, we're going to knock down a couple of these buildings, and then there's also going to be the link through there. Um, and here are some photos. So if we're starting on Deep Cupboard Road, so we're looking into the site. This is the existing barrier here. This will be relocated further into the site because uh, we will be having some parking spaces here. Uh, and if I go to the next one, you should see the other parking. Oops, I don't know what to do. Yeah. So this is where the remainder of the parking will be. And then the new barrier will be about here. This is looking to the north of the concrete track. So these are the Carla homes that are finished. This will all be re-landscaped. As you can tell from the moment, it's a bit um, parched. This again is looking down the concrete track. We've got the Carla homes to the left. This is um, going up into the woodland area between the concrete track. And this is the Basingstoke Canal. As you can see, there's already a well-established uh, route that has been used by um, various people for cycling and or walking. Um, this is looking from the track towards the vehicle depot. So we've got the Carla buildings over here, and this is the, the uh, vehicle depot. This is the end of the common boundary with the depot. There is also a big wheel wash or vehicle wash area, um, but predominantly beyond the majority of the vehicle depot, you've got trees. This is coming back onto Brunswick Road. So this is um, the Carla homes that are finished. Um, and the Sangs will start in this area here. So you can see looking east, we have got the Sang, which will be in this area here. Part of this building will come down. Uh, in the fullness of time, the whole building will come down. But for the purposes of the, the Southern Sang application, it's this bit. And this is looking north, so it's basically this will be uh, the Southern Sang in here. This is again looking towards the officer's mess towards the east. We have the vehicle depot here. And again, this is the area to the north of Brunswick Road. Uh, this is to the south, all of which will be within the Southern Sang. This is looking um, towards the concrete track to the south. So we're on Brunswick Road here. Um, and this is also looking down towards the big vehicle wash. Uh, all of this will be re-landscaped uh, with additional trees. This is looking towards the officer's mess. So the officer's mess is in here. Um, this, is, this will be part of, or both sides here will be part of the Southern Sang. We will be having a new link from the officer's mess at this point here which leads into the woodland. So we have the concrete track that already traverses the woodland going north. And this is just a general picture of the woodland to the north of Brunswick Road. And again, uh, we can see that we've got some steps. Uh, we've got existing steps that will need to be redone. Uh, but it's again, just general woodland um, as we see it today. And that's what it's going to be retained as. And then to the top of the site by the uh, Sang Link, this is going into the existing sports field here. So this building is coming down. And this is looking from the central sang to the south. So basically, this is where um, the central sang and the southern sang link will meet. And this is standing in the central sang. And the link will be in this area here. And this is just looking, this is looking down towards Brunswick Road. Um, again, buildings, small number of buildings to be demolished there. This is the proposal that we have before us. 
So you can see that the, the woodland is retained in this location here. The vehicle depot is re-landscaped. And then we have the central sang, uh, the southern sang link and the remaining area of the southern sang. And this is a uh, more clearer um, iteration because this shows the links into the residential parcels which will be located here and here and here and here. It's important within Deep Cut that we have strong east-west pedestrian and cycle routes as well as north-south and the scheme has been amended to ensure that we achieve this. During the course of the application we have received amended plans. They have been consulted on and as you will see from the update sheet um, we have had revised conditions from the County Highway Authority um, and also conditions from our tree officer. Um, the, uh, there is a verbal update to the tree conditions as the um, applicant has raised some concerns. So as a result of that, we will be adding words relating to the phasing of development as set out in the earlier conditions. Um, and also in relation to, so all of the conditions, that's 12, 13, 14 and 15, and 11, we will be adding words relating to phasing. That just ties it into the phase of 5A, 5B and 5C. Um, and they have asked that the last sentence on condition 13, beginning resetting, should be deleted. Um, we don't raise objection to this because we do have controls elsewhere within the terms of the hybrid permission. And condition 14, um, they've asked for tree officer until correct to be omitted. Um, because obviously they need the permission from the planning authority. Um, and again, there's no objection to that. Um, you will see that there are various amendments to the conditions as part and parcel um, of this. Um, but the recommendation is to grant subject to the amended conditions on the update sheet. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much indeed, Mr. Bishop. I must say that... Um, your report, as always, is comprehensive. I did find it exceptionally useful when you went through the various um, sections uh, of the activity, yeah. and that helped to um, fill in some gaps in my knowledge. Um, Councillor Deitch, yes, I see you there. Um, you indicated as a ward councillor you wish to speak on this item. Um, just for uh, anybody watching, um, you are a ward councillor. You're actually a substitute member of this committee, but in this instance... Uh, you are able to address the committee, but you do not have a vote in the outcome. Councillor Deitch. Thank you, Chairman. Um, members, uh, those of you that have served on this committee for a while will know that I attend all these planning committee meetings that involve Mindenhurst and generally speak to the items. Uh, you'll have heard me pay tribute to the pragmatism of deep cut residents who have been highly engaged with the whole process. Uh, since the MOD announced Princess Royal Barracks was surplus to requirements and would be made available for housing. You will also have seen that despite fundamental and obvious differences, uh, politically and otherwise, uh, the three ward members for Mitchett and Deepcut have been completely aligned in all matters relating to Middenhurst. And I hope that continues this evening. Um, moreover, you will also know that I have major issues with the DIO and how they operate. But despite that, I've come to these meetings to ask you to support the applications and make sure they go through without delay. Apart from the fact that Mindenhurst represents 50 almost 50% of the borough's target for housing and is therefore a major, of major strategic importance, it also has been plagued with delays, which has had an effect on the viability of the development and only adds to the disruption of local residents. However, this evening, I have some major difficulties with this application, which centres around just one thing. I will be looking to professional officers to explain to the committee what that issue is, uh, as I don't think the report really deals with it sufficiently. Essentially, it involves the access gate to the officer's mess, which is the one that sits behind the wire, and not to be confused with the officer's mess on Deep Cut Bridge Road that is currently being demolished. The Army contacted me earlier this year to attempt to get my support to unlock the gate and allow access and egress of vehicles to Army Training Centre Purbright. Long-standing residents might remember this road that was closed to public access in the 80s or 90s, long before my time here, 
Um, they wanted to alleviate traffic issues as a result of large vehicle numbers and movements at the Brookwood end of the camp. I would not give them the support they were after, as I was deeply concerned about the traffic impact that would have on Deepcut Village, and to my mind is contrary to the approval of the development as a whole. In fact, all traffic impact assessments were done on the assumption there would be no vehicle movements from Brunswick Road, and if my memory, that's if my memory serves me correctly. It is therefore very disappointing that I learned recently, despite all of this, the Army are now allowing vehicles to enter and exit ATC Purbright via deep cut at the Brunswick Road gate. I find this disrespectful to local residents who I said earlier have been very helpful in their attitude to this development and patient in respect of its disruption. This shows a blatant disregard to the planning process in my view. ATC Purbright is a major military establishment with very large numbers of people who work there. Additional vehicle numbers going through Deepcut and neighbouring wards as a result and across some of that Sangs, that beautiful Sangs area that the officer showed us earlier. Um, it's going to have an impact on neighbouring wards as a result. Um, and that has a potential to have a major impact, as I said earlier, that has not been accounted for with traffic impact assessments. I do not think the report adequately highlights all the associated issues with this. I also do not think that the conditions provide a permanent solution, and I'm concerned about the future intentions of the Army in respect of this. My request to the committee this evening is for someone to propose a deferral and ask the DIO to come back with a permanent solution to this issue and a cast-iron guarantee to cease using that uh, Brunswick Road in Deepcut with immediate effect and permanently. Okay, there's going to be uh, members here who are going to have developments, possibly even large developments, um, in their wards going forwards with all the housing targets and everything else. Okay, I have on the ground knowledge of deep cut. I'm asking you to help me with this tonight. I hope uh, Councillor Whitcroft will uh, support me on this, right? Um, you're going to want my support on things going forward on uh, future developments where people Councilor are taking Deitch, you're the beginning myth. to drift off the subject a little bit. Uh, 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 can I pull you back a bit, what I'm, after, what I'm after this evening is, is your support on this. We can get a deferral, get the DIO to uh, stop taking the mick, or the army, who, whatever the case may be, okay? And they can come back perhaps to the next PAP meeting and they'll have my full support. But they're trying to slip this in through that back gate, quite literally, uh, without you noticing, and I want it sorted tonight. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor Deesh. Before I go to the officers, Councillor Whitcroft. Thank you. Um, I too have significant concerns about army vehicles moving along this um, along Brunswick Road. Part of the reason, um, just to sort of answer Paul's question in a sense, the Brunswick Road was shut um, to public use at the time of um, the bombings by the IRA and um, Deep Cut was found to be on an at-risk, obviously bearing in mind what it was, and for that reason um, the road was closed to, close to the public and the barriers were put down. Since then, um, as I understand it, they have been asked repeatedly to allow the public to be able to use that road as, so that Deep Cut could commute directly to Brookwood Station and have refused. Now it's becoming residential and really for those residents living there um, on those estates to have, the, and they're not small vehicles going along there, um, to have those back all these years later, once it becomes residential, um, I agree with Paul and find very, very difficult. So I would be proposing um, the deferral that Paul asks for, um, because I think that for the sake of the current residents and the new residents within Mindenhurst, that needs to be um, resolved, because it is, after all, a community. And there is an alternative road, which is just further down, which is exactly what the public were told back then. Um, and so, yes, I will please be proposing a deferral for, um, for that to be looked into. Thank you. Um, being slightly older than um, 
some of you. Actually, I believe I drove down Brunswick Road once to get to Brookwood, and I sort of got through without having my collar felt. Um, and I went along there this afternoon, knowing that this was coming up to have another look at it. Um, and in fact, one of my um, uh, colleagues spent many an hour trying to negotiate the rights. The um, very recently late David Iverson, um, uh, without success. Or, but um, I see other people want to speak, but I am going to come back to uh, Mrs. Bishop on the points raised just now on, on the uh, access roads. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. Um, there is a reason why there is not great discussion in the report about the gate um, at Purbright, um, simply because, first of all, when the hybrid application was considered, um, the terms of the application did not include any traffic movements from the east at all. Um, the gate um, is actually located within Guildford. So the terms of the hybrid permission that were, that were sought by the Ministry of Defence and granted by the Council did not require any conditions or controls because that's not what was being asked of the Council. Um, what was being asked of the Council was for development that is solely contained within Deep Cut. No traffic movements were included in the environmental impact statement. No traffic movements were included in the transport assessment. So from, from a planning point of view, it was not necessary to control it because that's not what was being proposed. Um, we are just as surprised as you are that the gate has been opened because that's, as far as we're concerned, not within the terms of the permission that was granted by the council. Um, so that is the position that we have. In terms of going forward, we know that we have control um, as a result of condition four because the terms of the section 106 agreement as development triggers. So it means that unless the Southern Sang is provided um, by the relevant uh, occupancy trigger, um, that will then bring uh, the scheme into breach. Uh, and it also causes problems for the developers of those houses because the infrastructure is being delivered by Skanska and DIO. The residential is being uh, or will be delivered by house builders. So we know that going forward, we will have control um, but at the moment, there is no control in place in respect of traffic movements on Brunswick Road. Um, so, uh, I will for once let you come back, Councillor Deej. Um, I, I accept all of that, um, Ms Bishop, and thank you. Um, there's nothing to stop, however, the MOD, which they've done already, seeking a variation in the approval. So that's something I would like the committee to... What I'm trying to do is, is stop this in its tracks because we know the DIO are very creative in the way that they operate. Um, this is a thin end of a wedge. I'm warning you now. Put a stop to it. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> Mrs Bishop mentioned Condition 4, which is on page 108... Um, can I ask Mr. Bishop, just run through that condition for us, please. Do you mind? Chair, I'm sorry. Could we um, go back to the plans and could um, Mrs. Bishop please show where on the plans that lockable barrier will be installed? Because I think that would help um, to put everyone's mind a little bit at ease. Uh, okay. Yes and no. But, yeah, we go back and look at the plan, certainly. Apologies. Um, this is, we're talking about the area that is in this location here. Um, this is the officer's mess that has permission for 33 units. That is the only transport impact that has been assessed in relation to um, the development as a whole and also the impact on the Southern Sang. Um, this is yeah, I don't know if we see better on the aerial photo, actually. actually. So that officer's mess, when developed, will be accessed, or in the course of development, and once built, will be accessed from where? That will be accessed from Brunswick Road. So, but that is the only... Let's see if I can go... I want to go back to... The one I want is the aerial photo, because that will be the one. 
Although the mouse has decided it's having a moment. No, it's not going on. Right, right, right. It's got a mind of its own now. <laughs> I'm not hurting it now. <laughs> yes, I'm not surprised. Right, let's see if we can move it forward. I think the aerial photo is the one that's the most helpful. There we go. The, that's the one I think that's the most helpful. So this is Brunswick Road. This is the officer's mess, so we will have um, a, access into here. The condition four requires the provision of a lockable barrier. Now, this will also impact on the residents of the officer's mess, but it will just make their area more secure, uh, which they can easily open with a fob or uh, a tag, anything that you can have these days. Um, but that, this is the area that we are talking about. So you can see here, the road continues through into Purbite Barracks. And we are aware, um, since the um, hybrid permission was granted, there has been extensive development of Purbite, and we are aware um, that there are future plans as well for future, for new development at Purbite as well. So, yeah, that's, that's the issue, really. Where on, sorry, where on that um, drawing will the barrier be? The precise location is not yet known um, because the condition requires uh, details to be submitted, but it will be on Brunswick Road because the purpose of the condition is to stop vehicles entering and leaving per bike barracks. So that, that is the purpose of the condition. So it will need to be a lockable barrier. But will it be, so it will be within the area covered by the hybrid application yes yes that was the issue that we had because obviously the gate itself that is unlocked is within guildford and we and as obviously we can't control that one that's why otherwise for it. councillor wiener i just wonder if we could amend condition to four that uh, to be rather than prior to the first use of any part of the southern sang and sang link to be prior to the commencement of work uh that it should be built then, basically. So it should be done now, rather than waiting for the sign to be um, completed. Mm. I'm not sure. I mean, basically... Will that... Yes, we can amend the condition to be um, prior to the commencement of any part of the Southern Sang, that's fine. It won't address the issue that we have now, but it will certainly um, clarify the mind going forward. Right, because I was going to come back on this. Yeah, see, you, Councillor Breck. Um, as I understand it, the concern is that, notwithstanding the wording that's in here, in condition four, um, the army are able to bring through vehicles. Now, that could be a jeep, or it could be a loader with some tanks on it going down Brunswick Road. So by having this, are we going to stop vehicular access other than in the obvious emergency? 
which is contained in here, whatever an emergency may constitute, from the DIO and army and successors in title using that access? The successors in title go, once the Southern Sang is there, the, the, it will either be under the council's control or Surrey County Council's control. And the, bar the requirement is obviously for the maintenance and management of the barrier. So in the scheme of things, once the SANG is there, it will be within a public body's control. And there will be a condition that both bodies, whoever it goes to, will need to comply with, irrespective of um, anything else. The issue that we have at the moment is that that condition doesn't bite until they start to do works on the Southern SANG. So coming back to Councillor Wheeler's suggestion, that slightly squares that circle, does it, that would hopefully make that more, <laughs> pardon the pun, secure? It would be in terms of the implementation of the reserve matters, um, but it doesn't address the issue that Councillor Deitch has raised. So how do we address that issue? I think the only issue on that is basically to um, maybe look for a deferral, um, seek a deferral information um, from them. Because in terms of the condition itself, um, come back to Council Wheeler, um, in terms of the wording of the condition, that probably would uh, forward, fast track the information coming in. But obviously the SANG, it takes about, I don't know, two years to implement, to actually bring forward as well. So we'd probably still have the vehicle traffic, which Council Deach refers to, um, we'll sort of be continuing going through that area. Um, so if we are looking for further information from DIO, the only solution would be to obviously defer it and then ask for further information of how that would stop in the future. Um, thank you for that. Right, very quickly, um, I was just running through um, Councillor Black and Councillor Gordon and Councillor Tapper. Uh, if you've got some fresh insight on this, um, because we have a suggestion that uh, I will put to the committee shortly, but I'll just give you the opportunity to comment. Thank you, Chair. Yeah, um, I think we... Thank you, for Councillor Deitch, for bringing this to our attention. I, th I think he's absolutely right. I think we can't assume good faith on the part of the DI. We have to assume bad faith, sadly. Um, I think we need to find a mechanism to cease vehicle access through that route, except in an emergency, assuming there is a need for such emergency access. And if the, a step towards that is deferring it, then I would be happy to second um, Councillor Whitcroft's motion. Councillor Gordon. My point was quite simple. I feel the two ward councillors who are very close to this and have been from the start of it have asked us for our help, so I feel we should support them and defer it. Councillor Tapper. Thank you, Chair. Um, yes, I'm just a little concerned here that uh, uh, the, the, the last sentence of uh, Clause 4, first paragraph there, I say, and thereafter maintained and retai retained for its design purpose. And so I actually say that it will be put into use for its intended purpose. Uh, it could be installed and maintained perfectly, but left open all of the time. Uh, if the army feels that it's not in their interests uh, to um, repeatedly open and close the gate every single time a vehicle goes through, it may get lax and may leave the gate open. So is there any way that we can condition it that at all times when the barrier is not being used for the access of vehicles, that it must be clo kept closed and in a locked condition? Thank you. Um, yeah, it's an interesting point. I would revert back to the author, but I think that we've had... Um, that has been covered, and I think we've, we've moved on from that insofar that there is a recommend or a motion amending. Go on. Um, yeah, the purpose of the condition um, is nobody goes through it unless they are authorised to do so. And as far as I can see, it will be either the owner or who is responsible for maintaining the Southern, Suds, um, Southern Sang or the Highway Authority or the residents of the officers' mess. That's it. We are not expecting the Ministry of Defence to be taking access through there. That, that is not what the permission that the hybrid permission deals with. Yeah, thank you for that. Right, OK. Um, there is a suggestion that is put by board councillors, and I think uh, Mr Chenier is of mind, and I think there is a recommendation that, that this item is deferred 
uh, for further investigations and discussions with the DIO. Um, now, it does open the point of, um, are we looking defer on condition four, which would be my preferred? Um, can the SANG works proceed? Because this SANG is important to the overall development of deep cut. So, you know, the, we get ourselves in a slight problem if we delay things. We don't want to delay the development. So can we, can de can we defer just on condition four, for instance? Um, right. We don't think um, it's necessary in terms of Condition 4, because Condition 4 is quite clear in what we're seeking to achieve. Um, but we do feel that in terms of the overall strategic um, issues for, for the hybrid permission, um, it, it would be on those grounds. Because, for example, Natural England provide very detailed information on what a SANG should be. And they say it should be low trafficked, it should be somewhere where you can let your dogs off and run around. Um, obviously, if you have it bisected by a road that's being used for traffic, that's something else. And again, whilst the DIO will come back and say, well, we're nowhere near the figures in our transport assessment, that's not the point. The point is the hybrid permission did not talk about the traffic coming from the east. So it's a deferral, end of. Yep. Councillor Wheeler, you were indicating you wish to speak on. Thanks, Chair. It's just really to understand what we gain by deferring it. So if we defer it, we potentially slow down this, uh, this moving forward. We have a solution that prevents the traffic coming through. The sooner we move forward with it, the sooner we can put in that preventative barrier. And that's something from my understanding that the Ministry of Defence can do nothing about or the DOI or whatever it is can do nothing about. We have control of the road. We're preventing traffic going through the road other than in except exceptional circumstances. If we defer it, do we not lengthen the period by which that, that, that barrier can occur? And my understanding is we can't make them come back with information in any form of timely manner. There's nothing legislatively we can do to say that you must respond. And if they respond to say, actually, do you know what? In our plan, it's to keep it open. It, that, that almost makes it more difficult for us to put forward condition four without further negotiation and further conversation. Um, I don't see why we can't seek the information in a parallel stream, but move ahead, get this through, get it moving and get that barrier in sooner rather than later. But I may be missing something. No, I think it's a very helpful intervention, actually, because um, we want to gather other views. But can we just wait and see what comes back? Thank you.
Chair, I'm sorry to in uh, there's a point that's actually been um, raised by Councillor White and Councillor Whitcroft. Uh, what we're talking about in point of four is the details of. Can we not just say that there must be installed a lockable barrier um, rather than providing us with the details of the lockable barrier? It's got to be installed rather than the details of it. Um, and that then really does move it forward. So I've been speaking to Ms Bishop about this issue and I think a reasonable um, like proposal would be to actually add a wording to the condition stating that within a month of this condition or the decision of this application being granted, they have to submit obviously details of the barrier and also details of how they stop the traffic flow going from Purbright to this area of the SANG as well, in detail of that information. And if that detail and that information is really where Mrs Bishop was a little bit earlier, but if that information is not to hand within a set timescale, this comes back as it is a condition which we're waiting to fulfil. I think as a recommendation to uh, members of planning uh, of the, or the Planning Committee, sorry. I think that would be a reasonable way forward to actually bring it back to committee. Councillor Tapper, you wanted to say something? Uh, yes, Chair. I was just a little concerned that uh, if we decided to defer this item, that uh, that would end further discussion. I have a completely different uh, concern that I wish uh, to put before the committee. So uh, uh, it was just to notify you that uh, whatever happens, I would like that to be considered as well. Thank you. Yeah, your concern is what? Uh, my concern is uh, very much about the use of the SANGs as an amenity area. Um, and, and I'm referring here really to the, uh, the detail that's provided on uh, pages 122, 123 and 124. I have to say, Mindenhurst has maintained their history of completely useless and illegible maps. Uh, if you look at the legends on these maps, you cannot read them. It's light grey on white. Uh, I think it was designed specifically for the purposes that you couldn't work out what the map was actually telling you. Uh, I think uh, Mindenhurst should be uh, taken to task to, about this and told that in future they must prefer the, provide maps which actually serve the purpose they're there for. Uh, my, my, my concern uh, is that, uh, quite rightly, the SANG is going to be provided as a public amenity uh, for exercise, for, um, um, and for enjoyment, um, uh, and inevitably, um, as my own experience of the uh, sangs in the Frimley fuel allotments is concerned, uh, use generates detritus. Uh, the, 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 the sangs tend to get uh, uh, huge amounts of litter, uh, particularly dog excrement, uh, bags tossed into the, uh, uh, into the bushes, um, instead of put in the appropriate places. Um, I did a search for the word litter in this entire document and I was surprised to find no mention of it whatsoever. But if you look at the maps uh, on page 122, for instance, as an example, on the, um, the footpath area, uh, which I assume is the, the sand-coloured strip that uh, runs through both of these maps, you'll find little sort of oblong blocks uh, marked along there. It's impossible to tell what these are supposed to be. The legend doesn't uh, make it clear. Um, but I'm assuming that they aren't litter bins, uh, because otherwise I would have assumed there would have been some sort of mention uh, in here. Um, I, I would um, want to see somewhere in this application a condition which requires the introduction of litter bins at regular intervals throughout the SANGs and the provision of an adequate maintenance plan to make sure that these things are emptied at appropriate times and not allowed to overflow um, uh, and, uh, and leave um, unpleasant things uh, where people are trying to enjoy uh, what is being provided here. Um, so that, Chairman, is my, my concern, completely different from the one about the road. Uh, but uh, if that could be clarified to me as to how the situation with the inevitable 
uh, accumulation of litter is going to be handled in the sayings, uh, then I would like to see some reference to it in this planning application. Thank you. Thank you. Mrs Bishop. There are litter bins throughout the, the southern sangs, as there are within the central sangs. Um, it is within the terms of this proposal, and they are within the legend of the plans that we are looking to approve. Um, maintenance and management will fall um, initially to Skanska, and then ultimately to the council, as we will take over the southern sangs. So, yes, uh, and all the bins are enclosed, so badges and things can't get into it as well. So you don't have that kind of rubbish going out either. Uh, thank you for that assurance. Um, perhaps we could have some sort of reference uh, in future where this happens, uh, just to make it clear that the situation has been considered uh, and adequately resolved. Thank you. I'm sure on subsequent reports from Mrs Bishop that will be picked up, and I'm positive there will be some other things. Um, as far as the, uh, your comment on the, um, the maps concerned, um, Mrs Bishop and I have a uh, constant discussion uh, on, uh, I would like to see um, a larger scale map um, iterative development so that we can all see this. Um, I have something, I'm not sure if everybody's got it, I have something which is a start of a 10, um, but it's a very small start of a 10. But thank you, Mrs. Bishop, for doing that. But yes, it is an ongoing discussion, trust me, um, because uh, you know, not everybody has the opportunity of going up to deep cut on a regular basis. Um, right, so can I come back to um, um, the question on the road? Um, and we are at a situation, let me get this right, that we're saying that um, there's some additional wording we would put in condition four to require the gate to be installed. We need information from the DIO within an agreed period of time, a month, six weeks, a month. Um, Yeah, um, right. I think this is a complex um, discussion. It's obviously, you know, the, the ward councillors are facing this more than anybody else. But I think the view is that we should, um, both Councillor Deach and Councillor Whitcroft, um, and I take Councillor Whitcroft as proposer, that this item is deferred um, and officers are asked to continue discussions with the DIO recognizing the concerns which they have and the committee and the residents have on on the whole issue of this gate being permanently locked um, other than the maintenance of the sang and the residents of the developed um, uh, officers mess and that be deferred for a period of time that's the i mean the sang is going to take year two year three years um heaven knows how long it's going to take um going by my lawn, a long time to get it growing again. Um, so, you know, I think we need to give the officers time. And I would rather not set a time limit for this to come back, but it's got to be come back when they feel it's appropriate. Councillor Wheeler. It's just, just a very quick question. Why are we considering a lock, lockable gate and not a bollard? Not bollards. Um, so we could have automatic bollards installed. Uh, looking at it, it looks to me as though there's almost enough space on the road that sits within that area to have it to the east, I think it's east, of the entrance to the officer's mess development if that went ahead. Um, so I just wonder why we aren't considering a permanent barrier there, you know, permanent, permanently blocking off that road, why we feel we need to keep it open. Because if in terms of emergency vehicles and things, they can go around the other way. In terms of development to the east 
by the officer's mess. That's actually outside of the red line application site. That's why we couldn't, um, uh, we can't put it there at the moment. Um, in terms of the uh, condition for, yes, we could easily ask for bollards. Um, the, it, the, the overall purpose is to, once the SANG is there, the purpose of that condition is to stop vehicles coming from the east. Um, but at the moment, it's only when the SANG gets implemented that we get that condition bites. So that doesn't sort the issue out that we have at the moment. Could we put in then, or some such suitable obstruction? I, I, I have to say, I think I, I would be much happier, and I think from what I'm hearing, the ward councillors would be happier to have that as a permanent, bar you know, a permanently constructed limiter to the road. I mean, I don't know why the road has to, has to exist. I don't know why we can't just dig it up and, and grass over it, which might be an even even better, you know, remove the temptation, make it a dead end, um, would would be a, a sort of one view around it. But I am concerned that if we if we defer this, it's going to take longer. Whereas if we change this condition to be at the point at which work on that sangs commences, all they've got to do is go and put a, a spade in the ground and dig a hole and the work has commenced and that barrier can go in. That is why I think we need to send, ask the officers to go away and look at it and look at alternative methods, at suitable methods, um, and to come back at a time of that the officers feel is appropriate. Having had discussions with the DIO, who may tell us to take a hike, we don't know what response we're going to get, in technical phrase. Um, and that, that is, you know, there's a, um, a proposal, Councillor Whitcroft, are you still content with your proposal to defer, I will second that. Um, members, are you agreeable to the proposal, which in essence we'll fine tune the wording um, subsequently, but is basically asking the officers to, um, the whole item is deferred, and the officers to go away and have further discussions with the DIO to come to some form of agreement on a permanent barrier of some form or other to resolve this issue to the satisfaction of the Borough Council. Councillor Whitcroft. Could we um, add into that that the barrier in whatever form it is, is there before any works take place? It would ha can only be to the SANG being implemented um, because there's work on the SANG, there's work on the, the officer's mess, um, and it would have to be. Um, but we could have some... Um, so that leaves it open for abuse, then, if you like, that it could be used by the DIO pending the SANG being implemented. Yeah. I think we've got what we need to have here, and I think the officers hear what's saying, and, and I think without trying to overly complicate this, there is an issue, we're going to defer it, and the officers will go away hearing what's been said and come back with some solutions, quite frankly. Um, and, you know, that is the recommendation which you put in, and I'm seconding. Uh, members, are you in agreeable agreement with that recommendation? Is there anybody against? Councillor Whitcroft, I assume you didn't indicate your... <laughs> Sorry. Um, is there anybody against? I didn't see anybody not voting in that. Thank you, members. That has been, um, that's been carried, and we'll deal with that accordingly. Um, members, I thought that was going to be an interesting one. Um, and I, I, too, read Condition 4, and I went up to have a look at that in advance of the meeting and uh, got stopped. Um, <laughs> well, he did to turn around. <laughs> um, members, thank you. Officers, thank you. Members of the public that are with us, thank you very much. Uh, the next meeting is Thursday, the 6th of October. There is no training prior to that meeting, um, but I know um, there's a whole bundle of exciting training coming our way, um, and we'll be notified in due course. So, once again, everybody, thank you very much indeed, and good night.